tonight's big stories, Beijing accuses Tokyo of encouraging historical revisionism and says Asia Pacific does not need any military bloc. That's after Japan entered into a landmark defense pact with the Philippines. More encounters out at the West Philippine Sea. A Filipino fisherman is missing after his boat was hit by an unidentified ship in Subic, Zambales, while China reportedly blocked a medical evacuation from the BRP Sierra Madre. And Senate President Chis Escudero says he is ready to sign an arrest warrant for suspended Mayor Alice Ko if she skips tomorrow's Senate hearing. Ko's legal team says that she is traumatized by the previous hearings in the Senate. Good evening. Welcome to the show. I'm Regina Lei. I'm Gretchen Ho. And I'm Sean Yao. Well, as expected, China has issued a stern warning over the recently signed Reciprocal Access Agreement, or RAA, between the Philippines and Japan. Beijing says the Asia-Pacific region does not need a military bloc that they believe could incite a new Cold War. China's state media even went as far as to say that Tokyo is encouraging historical revisionism, citing its role in the Second World War. Camille Samonte with a big story tonight. Japan rejected China's accusations that the Reciprocal Access Agreement, or RAA, that it recently signed with the Philippines targets a specific country. The RAA primarily lays down the guidelines for joint training and greater military cooperation between the Philippines and Japan. The signing of this defense pact comes amid heightened tensions between the Philippines and China in the South China Sea. In a statement, Beijing said the RAA should not threaten regional peace and stability, target any third party, or harm the interests of any third party. They added the Asia-Pacific region does not need any military bloc, still less groupings that incite bloc confrontation or a new Cold War. China believes that Japan needs to reflect on its actions during the Second World War and act prudently in fields related to military and security. A report published by Global Times, a Chinese state-controlled paper, claimed that RAA encourages Tokyo's historical revisionism. Japan was described as a former aggressor with the article noting that it previously colonized the Philippines in World War II. Japan responded saying the RAA was not designed for conflict with any country. Reciprocal access agreement uh, is not targeted, uh, targeting any country. This is uh, a, a, you know, a cooperation agreement um, um, between the, the forces of the Philippines, um, Japan and the Philippines and it will enhance uh, our uh, defense cooperation uh, by streamlining the procedures will be uh, important for uh, us and uh, Japan and the Philippines and uh, also the, the neighboring countries uh, because we will be able to enhance our, our uh, capabilities in uh, sustaining the peace and stability in the region. Tokyo says maintaining rules-based international order is important to prevent conflict. That's why they are backing the Philippines' position in the West Philippine Sea, which is grounded on the 2016 Arbitral Award. We, uh, the like-minded countries sharing the fundamental values, need to cooperate to, to uphold this international order uh, based on rule of law. And this, this is very important. And this RAA agreement uh, is also uh, will be a very important uh, mechanism, tool, framework to, to, for, our, you know, for the two countries to enhance. The agreement has been signed. It still needs to be ratified by the Senate. According to Senator Amy Marcos, the chairperson of the Senate Committee on Foreign Relations, they will scrutinize every line and every word of the treaty once the same is referred to us to make sure that it is aligned with the national interests of the country. For Senate Minority Leader Coco Pimentel, the Philippines should be entering more agreements of an economic nature. He adds, producto, hindi pulbura. Senate President Xi's Escudero is meanwhile in favor of the RAA. He says it secures another strong ally for the Philippines. After the signing of the RAA, Japan has pledged to provide an air surveillance radar system to the Philippine Coast Guard and to provide more patrol vessels to the Philippines. Japan and Philippines also agreed to continue strengthening their maritime and air domain awareness together with other allied nations. For News 5, Camille Samonte, We Are One News. Speaking of the Senate President, 
Japan's Foreign Minister Yoko Kamikawa also paid a courtesy call on Senator Chi's Escudero today. In a post on X, the Japanese ambassador to the Philippines said, it's an opportune time to reaffirm our commitments on the strategic ties of Philippines and Japan, especially during Philippines-Japan Friendship Month. Minister Kamikawa also met with Presidential Advisor on Peace, Reconciliation and Unity, Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. and Bangsamoro Minister Raiza Dajuri. The Japanese government is helping fund peace and security initiatives in the region and has said it is committed to helping see through lasting peace and prosperity in the Bangsamoro. And the Philippines has rejected another one of China's claims this time around that the presence of the BRP Sierra Madre in Ayungin Shoal damaged coral reefs in the area. Chinese state-run media, The Global Times, reported that researchers found solid evidence of damaged marine life in Ayungin, particularly in the area where the Philippine vessel is situated. The underwater survey noted high concentrations of heavy metals in that area, which Chinese experts attributed to corroded rust from the ship. The report also said that disposed fishing nets and other garbage from the grounded vessel affected coral life. The National Task Force for the West Philippine Sea has responded, saying the accusation by so-called Chinese experts is false and a classic misdirection. It is China who has been found to have caused irreparable damage to corals. The task force has also called for an independent marine assessment in the West Philippine Sea. Amid this latest accusation from China, Philippine officials insist that the BRP Sierra Madre will stay put at the Ayungin Show. We will not give up that ship. It is an indication of the government's stand. It is the mandate of the AFP to ensure the integrity of the national territory. History will tell us that they have destroyed the environment in the West Philippine Sea. Still on the West Philippine Sea, a Filipino fisherman remains missing after a still unidentified ship hit his boat. F Filipino fishing boat FBCA John Robert was hit by an unidentified vessel about 62 nautical miles southeast of Sampaloc Point in Subic, Zambales last July 3, causing it to sink. 47-year-old Robert Mondoñedo survived after being rescued on July 6, but his brother Jose Mondoñedo remains missing. According to Senator Francis Tolentino, chair of the Senate Panel on Maritime and Admiralty Zones, the ship that hit the Filipino fishing boat allegedly had Chinese characters labeled Yang Fu, but its registry was still uncertain. Tolentino and the Coast Guard have not yet released complete details on the incident. But based on initial reports, the PCG's own ship near Scarborough Shoal reported it. At present, the PCG, NCR, and Central Luzon are investigating the incident as authorities are also still looking for the missing fishermen. A few days after that boat sank, there was another incident out there on July 7. The AFP, together with the Coast Guard, managed to successfully conduct an emergency medical evacuation of a Philippine Navy personnel stationed at the BRP Sierra Madre. That's according to National Task Force for the West Philippine Sea spokesperson Commodore Jay Tariela, who posted about it on X just this evening. Tariela said the PCG faced numerous obstructing and delaying maneuvers by Chinese Coast Guard vessels, but they were able to complete the transfer of the sick personnel. Despite the presence of sm various smaller Chinese Coast Guard vessels, the PCG boat was able to return to the main vessel without further interruption. The sick personnel was then provided with urgent medical attention and is now in stable condition. Let's hash out all these issues further with Senator Francis Tolentino, who's chair of the Senate panel on Maritime and Admiralty Zones. Good evening, Senator. I can't see you just yet. As well. Okay, so we have you on the line. Thanks for joining us tonight, Senator. Um, lots to hash out here. Let's let's begin with the missing Filipino fisherman um, whose boat sank uh, a few days ago. What else do we know about this? Well, I, I was I was informed by uh, some some of the uh, relatives of the missing missing fisherman that. Indeed, it happened uh, July 7, uh, and apparently one one survived, one was rescued, and then the other one was is still missing. Uh, and the 
vessel involved, uh, who, who, the vessel uh, allegedly that the term that uh, Banka is, is, a, is a Chinese character, Wang Yang Fu. Uh, so it's, it's under investigation now by the Philippine Coast Guard. Uh, has, has there been sighting of uh, the vessel Yang Fu? And Rear Admiral Balilo has said and has referred to this incident as an allusion. Hindi po daw collision ito. Allusion ang sabi niya. Ibig sabihin na tamaan po siya while the fishing boat was uh, on a standstill. Uh, is that correct? Uh, perhaps the, the report coming from the Coast Guard is correct. But whether it is allusion or collision, uh, the vessel which ram or, or uh, the other the boat should, under ex existing international laws, have rescued the victims of, of the rammed boat. So it appears it's a hit and run. Right. Uh, do we have any idea where Yang Fu is right now, uh, Senator? What more do we know about this incident? And really, what is within our capability in terms of investigating and trying to track down this boat that allegedly hit we our will. fishing boat? We yeah. will. Mm -hmm. We will. Uh, in fact, I just got hold of a folder concerning an incident which happened months ago. If you remember the incident where in three Filipino fishermen died, three or four, uh, the case has just been filed. We were able, the, the Philippine Coast Guard, with the help of the Department of Justice, they were able to consolidate all documents. And a case has been filed against the 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 uh, the vessel which rammed and uh, and resulted in the death of a Filipino fisherman near. I think, I think this is near the coast of uh, Pangasinan. Mm -hmm. So even though there was no cooperation on the part of uh, Marshall Island. A case that was, was indeed filed. So, sorry, what do you mean? Uh, what case exactly was filed? What was charged? There are there are parameters uh, under the International Maritime Organization charter that would enable the Filipino owner of the boat here, or, or are you referring to the other one, to seek damages mm -hmm. uh, from the from the registered owner? Of the, uh, uh, of the vessel involved. So you will take that same course of action, um, but, but then for Let's you to be... Let's wait for the results yeah. of the investigation, because uh, it will be tracked down. Uh, uh, young Fu will be tracked down. Pero, Senator, asan po final yung case? Uh, is it the own clause? Singapore, Singapore. At the IMO, right, uh, Senator? Yeah, Singapore. Mm -hmm. and, and is this for mediation? It, 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 did we file it for mediation, or this is an outright uh, case to charge the 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 other vessel? We, we did not, and my office was not involved. It's the we just provided assistance to the families of the victims. Mm -hmm. So it's the it's the DOJ which really facilitated this. So a it's not mediation. It's an outright <coughs> case. Uh, violation of several admiralty laws. Uh, Senator, nakausap na po ba natin si Robert Mondoniedo? Kamusta naman po ang kanyang kalagayan? He was out uh, hanging on in, to the payo for three in, days? In, hindi, hindi po, pero yung ang nagpaabot po sa atin ng uh, mensahe, yung isa pong konsihal ng San Marcelino, San Bales. Hmm. Okay, and since uh, nandito but na rin... But I think he's in yeah. good condition. Okay. Kaya lang siya yung nagsabi na nakita niya na naka-float lang si, si hmm. yung, yung kapatid. Okay. 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 Uh, maiba lang tayo ng slide, pero um, still around the uh, West Philippine Sea issues. Um, kamustahin ko lang po yung status ng Maritime hmm. Zones Act, uh, Senator. Kamusta? I have not yeah, heard yeah, an yeah. update. Yeah, since around late April, I believe. How, how are we doing on that? We will we'll be having a final bicameral conference committee this coming July 17. And hopefully all the details will be stressed out. And if both panels would be agreeable, uh, we will sign this and then thereafter submit submit this to our own chambers for submission for approval and then to be submitted as an enrolled bill to the president for signing. Are you um, are you confident? Optimistic. Na, yeah, optimistic, optimistic in the form and that <laughs> magkasundo naman ng both houses on this. Uh, yes, I, I think so. I think we will be. I think we can expect a, a positive outcome. 
uh, we, we, we just ensured that the word West Philippine Sea would be placed in the, in the bill mm -hmm. because once this is approved, we'll be submitting to the United, this to the United Nations for, uh, as, a, as a notice. And, and then just for the benefit of those who haven't been following it, uh, what exactly does the Maritime Zones Act do? Oh, uh, do you give me two hours to explain <laughs> this? <laughs> headline now, Senator, this just, headline. This would just, this would just uh, set, delineate the boundaries of our maritime zones, whether it's identifying the internal waters, the territorial sea, the contingent zones, the exclusive economic zones, and thereafter it will result in the production of a map for our seas. And, and the maritime zones law would, would also include the, the finer points of the 2016 arbitral ruling. Mm. Yung extension for continental, mm. or for continental What's the shelf, difference with, with that? That's right. a different one. That's a that's different, a different one. one. Uh, uh -huh. Will you be uh, amending the existing Maritime, maritime Zones Act to uh, consider no, whatever? No. Okay. Senator, I'm just That's very curious. That's a different one. It, it was uh, filed, uh, I think, a few weeks ago with right. the Department of Foreign Affairs with the United Nations. Uh, Senator, uh, I'm just very, very curious. No, um, yung Namria maps po natin, uh, they have been criticized by China as not showing uh, the territories, uh, the waters of, of the Philipp West Philippine Sea. Uh, ano po sa ngayon ang status ng ating official maps na tinuturo po sa mga bata sa paaralan? Well, well the, the map, uh, as I see it, is not yet a, a, a byproduct of our maritime zones law kasi wala pa nga ito. So, isa po sa isisi lang na, ng maritime zones law ay yung mapa na magdedelineate ng boundary ng ating karagatan. So, so magkakaroon tayo ng bagong map? Sa, okay. Magkakaroon tayo ng bagong map? Mas accurate map. po. Mas mm -hmm. accurate na mapa. Okay, so that's something we can expect. But to bring it back to the incident uh, today, uh, that ha I mean, not today, but that, what the topic that we're discussing tonight, which is yung uh, banggaan nga dyan, or hit and run, no? so West Philippine Sea with our fishermen. Uh, meron din po ba tayong ina-explore na diplomatic uh, route with regard to that? Uh, with regard well, to let's, identification? Let's wait for the, ano, there is a, let's wait for the investigation, a report of the PCG, and there is a process for this. Uh, we still don't know the exact uh, piece of registry of the vessel. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it, it, it can be a Chinese vessel, but a Panamian or Liberian uh, registry. Let's wait for the official uh, result. Uh, around when would that be available, Kaya, Senator? Perhaps the, this week, the Coast Guard can identify the exact uh, place of registry. If you, if you take a look at it, it seems that we are very vulnerable out at sea. I mean, these incidents can happen. Our yes, fishermen... that's why, that's why mm. one of the byproducts again of the maritime zones law would be the production of a new law, which is the archipelagic sea lanes law. Mm. It will now delineate the, the route where, where the commercial uh, boats, domestic and foreign, should pass. But I want that's another story. <laughs> well, now we need two hours. But, uh, Senator, I want to zoom out a little bit and talk about the June 17 confrontation at a union shoal. Um, in the days after that incident, there was a lag in the information that came out of Philippine authorities. China was first to issue its statement. Uh, and then, Yunya, in the end, it was, uh, you know, the National Maritime Council uh, Executive Secretary and uh, Executive Secretary Lucas Bersamin, who issued the first statement from Malacanang, but then immediately after he was uh, almost um, contradicted by Defense Secretary Gibot Teodoro. You chaired the panel, the Senate panel on maritime zones in the Senate. Is it fair to say that at this point there's not much cohesion between all these agencies that are working for uh, uh, alignment and communications in the West Philippine Sea? Yeah, no, I don't think so. All of them act in accordance with uh, real-time uh, accurate reports. So immediately, I, I cannot speak for them. Uh, there's a task force. And they, immediately after the event, uh, it, it, it would appear that uh, the events that unfolded were not yet that 
clear enough to be placed in an official statement. Although a, a lot of a lot of the items were, were there, there were already confirmed daytime, but the the accuracy probably would merit more evaluation. So it took them uh, uh, a while before a final statement would be made. But I rely on I rely on the statements made by the Department of National Defense. Okay, and uh, right after that incident, Senator, you also wrote a letter to uh, Foreign Affairs Secretary Enrique Manalo saying, uh, with the suggestion no, that maybe we can ask uh, like the Red Cross or some other body yes. to help escort. Yes. Um, did that prosper? Did uh, the Foreign Affairs Secretary reply? Yes, I, I, yeah. I, I, I think I received a, a letter uh, answer in response to my letter coming from the FA and I was verbally informed. I had a talk with the good secretary and they're not yet amenable to that. Okay. Because it would highlight a, it would show a more uh, intense situation, mm -hmm. elevating it to a, a more quote unquote conflict zone. Oh, so, uh, inflammatory escalation. escalation. Um, but overall, are you happy with the way things have been handled, especially the incidents, the run ins over at uh, Ayung and Shoal? Is the Senate, uh, uh, is, is, has the Senate been satisfied with? the government's initiatives I, I, in, in, term, in terms of the in terms of the the passion and the bravery of our soldiers there's no question about that mm -hmm. uh, but we all all diplomatic initiatives would have to contend with what would be the response of the other side which we cannot predict so am I happy uh, you, you can ask an ordinary Filipino if he's happy <laughs> as to what's going on right now in the West Philippine Sea. Mm. All right, we do hope for the uh, quick passage of the Maritime Zones Act uh, to get a lot more clarity out at sea. And uh, then uh, also uh, just wanted to jump in as well. Your thoughts on the RAA, Reciprocal Access Agreement? We which... welcome that. We welcome mm -hmm. that. I don't have yet the final version. I had a preliminary version before. Mm -hmm. It just goes to show that uh, multilateralism is the way to solve uh, this problem and ensure stability within the region. But uh, Senator, I think there's also some concern over how um, we will be able to protect our own citizens when the forces come. Mm. Um, yung kung, kung nakanino yung uh, judicial uh, the ju jurisdiction, jurisdiction rather if the jurisdiction. a service member mm -hmm. commits a crime or causes an accident. Yeah. It, 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 it's a feeling likewise being shared by the Japanese, especially those living here. Uh, the Okinawan basis of the United States. So I think it will be dressed out. they have learned a lot, they have learned a lot. And our revised penal code would surely be applicable. You don't expect much of a hurdle in Senate then? Let's see, let's see. <laughs> You're gonna have to... I cannot prognosticate <laughs> and for, uh, tell the, uh, the things that would uh, happen in, in, in the months and weeks ahead. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Okay, we're going to have to leave that there for tonight. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your time. Senate Majority Jack Leader Red. Francis Tolentino. We're going to be pausing for a quick break for now. Right after that, despite the fallout on the economy, NEDA Secretary Arsenio Balisacan expresses support for an outright ban on POGOs. The details on that when we return, keep it here. Welcome back. You're still watching The Big Story here on One News. As calls grow louder and louder to ban POGOs, NEDA and the Labor Department say that they have started studying the possible impact of a blanket ban on the local economy. Maricel Halili with that story. If you ask Socioeconomic Planning Secretary Arsenio Balisacan, it would be better to ban POGOs. In the Philippines, despite the possibility of losing up to 20 billion pesos in annual revenue, according to the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation, or PAGCOR. 
The calls to ban pogos in the Philippines once again intensified after a series of videos showing the torture of its workers were released. In addition, there were also numerous crimes and scams connected to its illegal operations. It may be a big number, but the cost, and uh, the so particularly social cost of, uh, of pogos are quite high. And also we are trying to position our country as a legitimate uh, place for business uh, where, uh, you know, uh, um, we are trying to attract uh, investors to come, tourists to come, uh, and, and so the least that we want is to have a reputation na nandito yung mga criminals. Balisakan emphasizes that the possible loss of revenue from POGOS can be recovered through other means. Finance Secretary Ralph Recto has said that he is keen in recommending to the president to hold the operations of POGOS, given the recent issues surrounding the industry. However, the cabinet has not yet discussed the banning of POGO. Senate Deputy Minority Leader Risa Ontiveros had called on the Executive Department and the Senate leadership to act quickly on the recommendation to ban Pogo. Other senators, including Senate President Chisa Scudero, Senate President Pro Tempore Jingoy Estrada, and Senator Loren Legarda expressed support for the ban. For its part, the Labor Department is already conducting a profiling of more than 20,000 workers who might lose their jobs if POGO is banned. This involves assessing the skills or abilities of POGO workers to determine other jobs they would potentially enter. We cannot actually uh, just uh, wait for the day na sinabing close na. Uh, dapat nagtatransition na rin kami. Baka gusto na ninyong mag-start ng training ninyo nang sa ganun maihanda na namin kayo sa available na trabaho. The profiling has already begun in Metro Manila where PAGCOR has ordered that work from home is no longer allowed for POGO workers. This is to make it easier for DOLE to conduct inspections at offices and determine the legitimacy of operations. For News 5, Maricel Halili, We Are One News. Senators see no reason for suspended Mayor Alice Go to skip tomorrow's hearing on POGOs. Goss Camp says she was still traumatized by the previous Senate hearings, wherein she was questioned for hours about her nationality and alleged ties to criminal syndicates. Her team could not provide the Senate with a medical certificate, though, saying no doctor wanted to get involved. That prompted Senate President Chis Escudero to offer the services of the Senate's in-house doctor. He also warned Go that skipping the hearing could force them to issue an arrest order. Kung wala siyang makuha ang doktor, edi pwede magpadala ng doktor ang Senado para tiyakin at tingnan ang kanyang kalagayan. Okay. Kapag ka nag-iso ng sabina, yan ay under compulsion of law na tinatawag. Ibig sabihin, wala sa kapasahan niya kung siya'y mag a o hindi. Kung hindi sila dadalo, nasa kamay ni Senator Risa kung siya'y magre-request na mag-iso ng warrant of arrest para sila'y pwersahang padaluhin sa pagdinig ng Senado. At pipirmahan ko ang warrant of arrest na yun. Let's get some updates from the camp of Mayor Alice Go. We have with us tonight her legal counsel, Attorney Nicole Jamila. Ganda gabi po. Ah, Nakamute po kayo, Attorney? Ayan, I'm sorry. Hi, good evening everyone. Good evening. Attorney, there you heard uh, Senator Chisa Scudero talk about what's going to happen if uh, Mayor Alice Go doesn't attend. Uh, there are two things here that your camp has mentioned as reasons. Number one is that her life is threatened and the second one is that her mental health is affected. Should the Senate just take your word for it dahil wala po kayong medical certificate na maibigay? Um, well, for one, um, that is the actual reason talaga why she cannot attend the hearing tomorrow. Um, number two, we tried all the avenues we tried ever since, even before the, I think, May, um, the, the, the second one before she was issued a subpoena, we tried um, contacting and asking for medical certificates. Um, however, uh, we did not receive or parang hindi okay ang um, ang reception ng medical community because of the issue. Medyo high profile kasi um, si Mayor Guo. So basically, um, no one wanted to um, be involved in it. Except perhaps Wait. Senate President Cheese, um, have Wait. has he actually made the offer to you guys na hindi lang yung nasa TV through a statement, through an interview? Um, has he reached out to your camp? And would your camp be willing 
or amenable to having the in-house Senate doctor take a look and maybe examine uh, Mayor Go? Uh, uh, for the offer, none. Um, with respect to, uh, with due respect to Senator Cheese, um, this is the first time that our team received or um, heard of that offer. And should it will be, uh, should it be given, talaga, um, we will check with Mayor Go. Because at the end of the day, it's her decision, naman talaga. As lawyers, we will just assist. We will just give her the options, the remedies provided by law. She decided I'm, to I'm appear. Still, I'm, I'm still a little bit confused, though. On what grounds is she skipping tomorrow's hearing? Uh, number one, um, because of actual threats. Actually, um, since day one, she, she's been receiving actual death threats um, considering um, okay. considering the yeah. happenings. So even before um, drones were heard, drones were seen in her vicinity, in her area. So, and also we can see naman sa mga social media posts of the threats that we have or that, that she has. So that's the first um, argument or the first um, ground that we cited. And second is the trauma that she received talaga from the interviews or from the hours of grilling. So uh, on her part, hindi na niya kakayanin or hindi na daw niya kaya kung sakali man na um, she will be placed under the same pressure, under the same, um, well, hours of torture um, for that matter. Clarification lang, Attorney Hamilia, um, wala bang option na mag, uh, uh, to join in via Zoom or, you know, via the internet, phone in, uh, kung security ang, ang concern? Well, the subpoena that we received, um, the subpoena, I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, um, a personal, um, they require personal appearance from mayor. So um, that um, re uh, avenue was not, um, I think, given or um, he, he wala pa kami then, I think even before, wala rin kami experience na um, a resource person was allowed for that matter. Except, I, of course, I the COVID time. So I, I think that was the only time that they allowed that. I what? am sure if you ask the Senate for a closed-door executive session, though, where she's willing to divulge all that she knows, I'm sure they would be amenable to that. Has that option been floated? Well, I think, um, if I'm not mistaken as well, Senator Wynne um, expressed his opinion on the matter, um, saying that um, Mayor Guo um, allegedly, allegedly is not qualified to... Um, uh, as the state witness, because no, 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 sorry, yeah. attorney, attorney, I, I didn't mean that she would stand as a state witness, and you're correct, Senator Gachelian has said she does not qualify to become a state witness. What I'm asking is, did you consider uh, asking for an executive session closed door if you were so worried about her security? Right now, because we are not into that, considering that what really, um, what was really stated on the Senate hearing was her truth. So, contrary to the opinions, with due respect, then, um, yun talaga po yung kwento niya. So, yun po yung nabanggit niya. Yun yung sasabihin din naman talaga niya, regardless kung sa executive session ito or an open or a public hearing for that matter. Right. Attorney, uh, yung hearing bukas, scheduled for tomorrow, Wednesday, uh, pinapatawag din, no? sinapina rin ang mga kapatid ni Mayor Go. Mm -hmm. I think including her parents, but I think they are, or her alleged parents rather. But I think those two personalities are outside the Philippines. Some of the supposed siblings, I guess, I'm just gonna say, supposed siblings ni Mayor Go, pinapatawag din, um, are they also your clients? Will they be showing up? Or is this, uh, everyone's just, are they gonna turn up? Uh, number one, um, I, we already filed. I, I mean, I think last Friday, um, one of the Senate representatives went to our office and they brought with them copies of the subpoenas for the supposed other family members of Mayor Guo. So we are very, um, we made a, a letter or a certification that we do not represent them. So actually, as we speak, I do not know them. I do not, um, I haven't talked to them. I have not seen any of them. So I cannot speak for them. Okay. Naman talaga. Okay. Uh, Mayor Go has been absent for weeks. Uh, she has not been seen in her farm. Is she still in the Philippines? And is there a possibility that uh, your camp's mind would change? Because uh, Senator Chis Escudero said that they might issue an arrest order. Uh, well, 
Um, on the exact location of the mayor, I'm sorry, um, I'm bound by the lawyer-client privilege, but what I can say is that at, at the end of the day, the decision is always hers. Um, the opinion or the, 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 the options or the remedies, we just provide them as lawyers. We give them the options and um, it's up to her naman talaga. So who knows? Malay natin, biglang magbago isip din niya tomorrow. Um, kasi I think it's uh, the, the hearing tomorrow is at 10 a.m. So um, we do not know because um, as we speak, we already gave them or he, we already gave her um, yung options nga na available and at the same time, the possible risks or the consequences. We already discussed that with them. Um, nakita or sinabi na namin sa kay Mayor na um, ito yung mga possible na of course, um, in case nga na sakaling hindi makapag-comply sa subpoena, we are aware that the Senate has the power to issue contempt order. And as, as a consequence, um, she might be um, or issued also a warrant of arrest. So, um, he, we know, we don't know, actually, kung mali natin, tomorrow, um, before the hearing, magbago din naman ang isip niya. Pero you've presented her, kumbaga, with all the possible scenarios and her all her options also, of course, as her yes. legal team. Yes, yes. The um, one thing that's come to light uh, between the first few Senate hearings to the most recent, one, the, the last one that, uh, well, I don't, actually, she didn't attend the last one either, mm -hmm. but one thing that's come to light is that her fingerprints, uh, the fingerprints of Alice Liel, Liel Guo and Guo Hua Ping matched. And that's why the senators and the other lawmakers are convinced those two people are one and the same. Have you submitted any evidence to counter that? Actually, we did not. We do not have uh, copies of that. Um, so, number one, we do not have copies of that. Number two, we are not um, privy to any of those supposed um, investigation or um, um, conducting or of uh, or getting the fingerprints. So, we cannot really get any or we cannot really give any comment. Uh, number two, I think they already filed a petition um, for the cancellation yes. of the live birth of Mayor Guo. Uh, but I do not know or we do not know really if that evidence was used against her or if that w if that was the one of the basis uh, of, of the OSG and filing the petition. So right now, we cannot actually, um, it's all based on hearsay, it's all based on the um, media, it's all based on the conferences um, held by our good senators. Pero hindi, wala kami talaga officially nakita na document. Um, and wala din kami nakita na kahit anong um, report um, regarding that fingerprint. So we cannot say anything of, um, as, we, uh, as of today. You mean your team has not uh, been, been uh, um, contacted by Informed. the offices yes. of the good senators about this? Yes, yes. Um, Actually, uh, just to be clear, no, um, ma'am, um, the only, I think the only cases that are pending right now against the mayor is number one, the criminal and the administrative cases against her in her capacity as the mayor before the office of the ombudsman. And I think that was um, another issue because um, it tackles the issue ones of the business permit for Zoom U1 technology for years 2023 and 2024. So that is still pending before the office of the ombudsman. Number Number two case is the, um, the uh, I think the human trafficking case that was filed against her by the PAOC um, and the other um, government agencies, and that is still pending before the Department of Justice regarding the supposed uh, I think the connect the alleged connection between the mayor and the um, uh, the uh, Hong Sheng and uh, the the Zun Yu one also. So. Um, that is the only official doc, uh, official cases um, that we received and that were filed against the mayor. And that is the only cases that we are answering right now. Okay. But, assu how, how but assume for a second that the... So, so you're saying that you haven't seen any of the documents linking her identity to Guo Hua Ping. Yes. And we're telling, yes. you, we're, telling you it's a, we're telling you that for a fact that the NBI has confirmed to us that... Mm -hmm. They have tested, they have matched her biometrics with, mm -hmm. uh, to, to that person named uh, Guo Hua Ping, who arrived in the country 
uh, was it July 12? Uh, no, that was her birthday. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, I don't remember the, the year, the but year. nevertheless, yeah. they've, they've linked her identity mm -hmm. to that. So what then? If they, uh, they have proof uh, that the, the, the uh, Alice Guo, Mayor Alice Guo's identity is, uh, is not, is, she's not who she says she is, right? So your, your answer to me earlier about the executive session is that she's going to answer all the same things and it's her truth. But you know, since then, the authorities have proven that there's, uh, she's lied. So, so well, what's your recourse now? Yes, um, ma'am. At the end of the day, naman, um, it's all about the law. It's, it's all about the due process. So we will be answering those uh, allegations or those inquiries before the appropriate court or before the appropriate time. Right now, kasi it's not really proper for us to discuss or to comment on something that we do not see and we do not have. Um, I think um, the burden of proof is always with the accuser or with the, with the plaintiff. So um, if given the proper time and if given the proper forum, we will be we will answer definitely um, as long as the documents will be presented to us. Because you know, man, eh, um, as lawyers were uh, were were as, uh, as lawyers were um, given or were were here for her, um, for her. Uh, para ma check and to determine if indeed due process was served or if the constitutional rights of every person um, has been protected. So uh, at the end of the day, court sa court pa din talaga babagsak ito. Okay, and that's been also consistently what Attorney David has been telling us. Um, but uh, I, I'm assuming, Attorney Hamilia, na you are in touch with Mayor Costel. Uh, kamusta po siya? Like, just broadly speaking, without disclosing or giving up your privilege as her attorney, of course. Yes, yes. Um, well, she's down, I think. Um, that's, the cop, that's, the, um, that's the general observation that I can say. Um, I think she's really affected, um, especially of the, of the criminal case that was filed against her. So, after that, kasi dun na, medyo nagdare-derecho na siya. So, I think think um, the first criminal case or I think the first case talaga that was filed is before the office of the ombudsman he was, she got suspended and then right after that um, letters of authorities from the BIR were issued against her and against her companies and then after that um, the DOJ or I mean the PAOC filed as uh, I think a uh, um, a human trafficking case against her and then just recently uh, a petition for cancellation was filed against her. So, in a matter of month, a month, I think, um, in and out, yung cases na nafafal sa kanya. So, kami nga na lawyers, stress na, so how much more si mayor talaga. So, yun, may time na, um, na sa stress, may time na nakikita namin na medyo uh, affected, yun naman. Not, not only medyo, pero affected talaga. But, the good point is um, she's trying, she's fighting naman. All right, we do hope uh, for more communication from your camp as well as uh, uh, the different offices that have already uh, brought to light so many things about uh, Mayor Alice. Anything? No, I, ju I was just going to say that uh, as you just enumerated, Attorney, the walls are closing in. All these government agencies are... Uh, are after her. I just don't see how you're going to get out of this. You keep coming back to due process, but in constitutional rights. But if she was proven, and she has been proven to be a foreigner, then she does not have constitutional rights, right? So I'm just, what is your recourse now? Um, um, how, do you, how do you get out of this without cooperating with the Senate? Oh, well, with due respect, kasi yun nga, number one, ma'am, um, under the Constitution, every person has a right naman, um, oh, regardless every Filipino. of age, gender, every, nationality, ev every so that Filipino. is ours. Attorney, every Filipino has constitutional rights, but yes, yes. the Senate and has proven right that she's a foreigner. Mm -hmm. And right now, as we speak, um, she is a Filipino citizen. Um, there is no law or there is no um, case filed against her and there is no decision yet from the court saying otherwise so that's what we are holding on right now um and then of course yun nga kasi um we do respect to our senators or dis extinguished senators um let the courts decide on this matter considering that these are all yun nga nasabi na natin cases were already filed against her so um uh, 
proper courts or proper jurisdiction should follow already. So whatever the decision or whatever cases will be filed, um, I think Mayor Kuo is ready to face that in the proper forum. Okay. <laughs> we will continue. We will continue to follow the story. Thank you so much for your time tonight, Thank Attorney you. Thank you, Pa. Nicole. Thank you. Thank you. Is it Jamila or Hamila? Hamilia. 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 Sorry, Attorney Nicole Hamilia, Legal Counsel for Mayor Alice Kuo. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Pa. In other news, the White House has denied that U.S. President Joe Biden is being treated for Parkinson's disease. This comes after the New York Times reported that a doctor specializing in Parkinson's visited the White House at least eight times from August to March, citing visitor logs. There has been great concern that Biden has an undisclosed illness after he appeared frail or at times losing his train of thought during the June 27 debate with Donald Trump. Reuters also reviewed the White House visitor log and found that a neurologist named Dr. Kevin Kennard did visit the White House from August to March. But White House Dr. Kevin O'Connor said that Kennard's visits were only to support active duty members involved in the White House operations and not to treat the president. O'Connor also noted that Biden has not seen a neurologist outside of his normal annual physical. Still, White House Press Secretary Karen John Pierre refused to confirm Kennard's visits, citing privacy and security. If it's not in the medical report, obviously it's not, it, it's not something that the president uh, is dealing with. Has the president been treated for Parkinson's? No. Is he being treated for Parkinson's? No, he's not. Is he taking medication for Parkinson's? No. So those are the things that I can give you full-blown answers on, but I'm not going to confirm a specialist, a, any specialist that comes to, come, comes to the White House. We cannot share names of specialists broadly. It, from a dermatologist, to a neurologist. Quick update uh, naman tayo ulit sa preparations sa ating Olympians with just 17 days to go before the opening of the Olympic Games Paris 2024. The grind never stops for Filipina boxers Nesty Petesho and Ira Villegas as they continue their conditioning for Paris 2024. Petesho and Villegas are still currently in Metz, France for the preparations. Uh, for the boxing tournament. Meanwhile, Tokyo silver medalist Carlo Paalam and bronze medalist Yumir Marshall, along with third member of the women's squad, Herji Bakyadan, are in Germany for a separate training camp. Petesho and Paalam and Marshall are the Philippines' strongest contenders for a podium finish in the Summer Games as they target to end the quest for the elusive gold in the sport. Meanwhile, also ramping up his preparations is golden boy Kaloy Yulo. Yulo has been focused on refining his skills as he prepares for his comeback at the Olympics. The Filipino gymnast made his Olympic debut at the 2020 Tokyo Summer Games where his best finish was fourth in vault. This time around, the 24-year-old Yulo is hoping to finally bring home the gold for the Philippines in gymnastics. And just before we go, we'll leave you with our big picture on this Tuesday night. And it is a photo of First Lady Lisa Araneta Marcos together with Chris Aquino's sons, Josh and Bimbi. The Aquino boys paid the First Lady a visit at her office earlier today. On her Facebook page, First Lady Lisa wrote, Thank you, Bimbi and Josh, for dropping by. It was so nice to see you guys after all these years. In a separate post on Instagram, First Lady Lisa thanked Bimbi and Josh for taking time off to visit her and said that she loved the pasalubong that they got her from their overseas trip. Of course, so many know. Marites on social media. <laughs> well, you know, like uh, we've been analyzing pictures here uh, since yesterday. I think it started with Gretchen. So everyone's also like uh, kind of saying that we the... don't see the First Lady in yellow all the time. Yes. Oh, She's so usually in red. It's the first time it. I've seen her wear yellow. Really? It's the first time I've seen her wear yellow. You she think there's something wears behind it? Red or blue, uh, sometimes pink. Hey, but to see them, but together, you know, why not? I mean, there's right? no. Hmm. The this question of this nation um, has been caught up in the feud of the two families, mm -hmm. and we know those families, and just seeing them together in a photo, with doing very, socials. It was uh, shocking in this to time and age, and for the kids who do not know, the death of Chris Aquino's father sparked the revolution that ousted the First Lady's father-in-law. Marcus Sr. And, and uh, uh, sent them into exile right. in Hawaii.
to Hawaii. However, so, so that's that's why it's uh, this picture is um, so mind-boggling. Mind-boggling for a lot of people. The first lady is also an Araneta. Yes, Correct. Right. And it's uh, related to um, I don't remember Mar, the Mar Rojas. yes Mar Rojas. yes former uh, former DILG, DILG secretary, secretary Mar Rojas. of uh, Benigno Pinoy president mm, who's Pinoy. obviously linked to the Liberal Party. Right. And so, also Pinoy is of course the older brother of Chris Aquino, so the uncle of Josh it, and Bibi. It isn't impossible to build bridges. I know. There. Are we taking for granted that everyone just knows this? I think <laughs> I think it's probably it probably took a lot of people off guard not knowing that they have linkages. Right. Uh, I guess maybe people think that if they these see each other, families it's are probably not, not in public. Oh. Not, I mean, yeah. But to see those yeah. photos. Well, the officially that? though, the mm. PCO has uh, not commented at all about the visit of Josh and Bimbi to the First Lady. Today. It, it's a, it's a, I don't think they have to. It's a yeah, private the, visit. The right? First Lady already. But, but we want some <laughs> answers, I guess. <laughs> 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 ah, that's the question you want answered. Okay. Well, okay. Let's just be frank because it's all on social media anyway. Um, it has triggered a lot of um, very political comments on mm -hmm. social media mm -hmm. because mga election na guys midterms na uh, next year. That's so that, that's that's why the timing and the yellow dress, so everything's now being questioned. Mm -hmm. Politics is about signaling. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it is about signaling. Former right. Vice President Lenny Robredo said though that she will be running uh, as mayor of mm -hmm. Naga. So that's uh, that part is confirmed. She's not running for senator. Mm -hmm. Well, well, like uh, Attorney still Hamida far said, away. Uh, yeah, things can still change. Someone's mind can always change until the very last. I, we do know as well that the um, Liberal Party, if not some of the other uh, political parties, are also trying to convince former Vice President Lo Lenny Robredo to run for a national post still, mm -hmm. right? So we, we know that they to, are still talking right. to her about so it. So far, no, nobody has managed to convince Correct. her yet. And yet. we have run out of time. That's it for the big story tonight. Well, Wait. you got to take a look at the character of someone and the track record. I don't think the vice president, the former vice president, is, you know, usually changes her mind. She does what she says. Yes, right. that's true. And probably what we can do to analyze that photo too. Take a look so at So it's it. just like the US then. If not, <laughs> if not Biden, then who? If not Robredo, then who mm. is the face of the opposition? And that is the big question <laughs> for another day. All right, we are one use all science all the time. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good night.